The Explore Science Centre in Bristol offers futuristic, interactive exhibits that bring science teaching to life. Unfortunately, asking visitors to the centre to describe a typical school science lab evokes less inspiring impressions. None of the equipment working properly. Broken stools. Gas taps blocked up. <laughs> equipment on the table. Horrible. Scribble all over the yeah. tables. Oh. And dirty smell. It smells horrible. It smells horrible and it's like got like a damp feeling. Dark and dingy normally. Despite science being a forward-thinking subject, the staple design of school science labs has changed little in the last 50 years or so. In this programme, we visit three schools, each at different stages in redesigning their labs. Estover College in Plymouth is looking at design ideas for its new facilities. At Hartcliffe College in Bristol, building work has begun and the students are planning their new labs. Down the road, Bristol's Brunel Academy has recently opened. How will its brand new labs measure up? At Estover College, science teacher Jack Winstone finds that his lessons are restricted by the existing labs. They're all wooden benches. All but two are, are fixed, and even in the two where the, the tables are movable, the, the gas supplies are fixed. You all need to be in a roll on there. One of my main considerations is, is movement of the class around, and the, the nature of the room means that, that pretty much all the students have got to be on the same task at the same time. Today, Jack's looking at salts with his year 11s. A demonstration of the reaction between sodium and water has the students crowded round the front bench. Now, if I get the oil off, it means that the water is going to react with the surface. So I'll give it a good wipe with a bit of a uh, bit of filter paper. So we'll put it in and we'll see. OK, so a little bit of sodium and it goes. Now, straight away, you can see it's a reactive metal because remember, that's cold water. Can you see a gas being produced? Yeah, yeah. it very much has to be kind of me stood there leading. This is the practical phase. This is the theory phase. However, change is afoot. Estover is about to undergo major redevelopment. The design of the new science labs has received particular attention with a view to varying styles of teaching and learning. Obviously one acknowledges there is a, a hugely important body of content in science. But for us I don't think there's enough space for project-based inquiry work. So what does Jack see as the winning formula for successful teaching space? It's, it's really versatility. I mean, like we say, it's not all of the work we do in science is, here's a Bunsen burner, go away and, and react with this. You know, we do a huge amount of group work. Um, we do a huge amount of research. It might be independent research. It could be group research. It could well be that the main bulk of the classroom, one area, and there's a little breakout group of five students, you know, planning a little presentation. But it, at the moment, these labs don't really lend themselves too much to that. Estover is one of several schools taking part in Project Faraday, a national scheme partnering schools with architects and educationalists in order to radically redesign school science labs for the 21st century. Why were school science labs being left behind? I think it's because they pose particular problems for, for designers. Because there are requirements for services, they tend to be less flexible places. So building that flexibility in poses particular problems. We've worked very closely with Esova, who are one of our schools, in a series of workshops with staff and students to explore what science education is about. The, the question of how a science lab is equipped is crucial, I think. It's not about having the most whizzy equipment. So it's not about having the biggest plasma screen. What, what you need is equipment which is going to empower teachers, equipment that teachers can use to be creative in their own way. With unlimited money, we could pick some very ex extravagant toys, if you like, or science um, you know, implements and, and things that would look fantastic. But is it going to work on a day-to-day -day basis? Logistically, will I be able to teach in that room every single day you know, to, to cover the necessary things that I've got to teach to a class? Project Faraday has recognised the importance of consulting the people who are going to use the new labs. Then a crucial part of the project was actually working with the, with the students and the staff at the schools involved, especially the students. I think uh, we were surprised at how insightful the students were about their own education. A similar realisation has helped in other design projects. At Hartcliffe Engineering Community College in Bristol, building work is already underway. The school is being redeveloped as part of the National Building Schools for the Future programme. Head of Science Simon Thompson has been heavily involved in designing the school's new science labs. 
right from the word go, like I've been really involved in the design process for the labs and what we're putting into the labs. Very rarely in your career do you actually get to build your own lab, designed the way that you would like to have it. So I think that was the biggest appealing thing for me was to be able to go, right, in an ideal world, what would I like to see? No, um, what shape's the science room going to be, Dane? It's going to be a rectangular one, a square one, and then a weird semi-circle design one. Involving the kids in the design is probably as important as having me involved in the design. They are the users, so we need to be tailoring the classrooms and the laboratories for the user. Today, Simon is getting his year 10s to think about what they want to see in the new labs. What you're going to be doing is sketching out a design of the things that you want. Things that you've got to think about. It's got to be able to sit 30, at least 35 students in the labs. And we've got to have gas, water and electricity. And this is where your design comes in. It's stuff like, where are you going to put the benches? Um, where are you going to put the gas, water and electricity? Are they just going to be around the outsides? Are you going to have them floating around in the middle? So you can spread yourselves out as much as you want. And let's get going with doing that. That's a projector and that's a projector and that's a white bar. How can your table stop there on that side and goes all the way to the other side? Because if it goes all the way down then people can't get through the door. Put like the water and the gas and electricity that govern the outside, yeah. but one of the tables in the middle will have all of it on. Yeah. And then like a whiteboard on this side on the wall and then one on that side. Yeah. The new technology that we're going to incorporate, there's a huge amount of stuff going around at the moment. Um, one of the things that I'm really excited about is we're planning on having uh, cameras mounted in the ceilings of all the different laboratories, which means that, um, and they're also wired for sound. So if I was doing an experiment in my laboratory, then the five other science teachers' classes could be watching me do that experiment live. We're in the process at the moment of we filming all of our experiments so that we can put, we're developing a click bank so that if a student misses a lesson, they'll be able to go online view the actual lesson with either their teacher or another teacher, watch the experiment and get all the notes and things from there. They've got, there's two whiteboards so that the people who are sitting with their backs to that whiteboard can see the, both directions. If there's a whiteboard there, I'm sure going to be there to show the other people. That well, if there's a projector coming down, you can try and get it so it reflects off of that one onto that one, or it could be a projector with like two ends so it can like show on both sides. I want to just go through and so get you to share some of those ideas with everyone else so that we might think about how we're going to change our design. So I know um, Chelsea and Bo, you had one really cool feature that I, I thought was great. We had a year 11 vision area which is just like blocked off from the rest of the class and it's like got comfy seats in and like a bookcase or whatever. Really good idea. Um, another one like a design feature was yours Tom. My idea was to have a whiteboard with a dark background so you don't get distracted from anything else on the walls like rabbits and flowers. The pupils' ideas are piling up thick and fast. It's Simon's job to incorporate these, along with the staff's ideas, into the final designs. This is one of a number of designs that are going around at the moment. So in the theory area you've got a couple of different whiteboards spaced around so that you can be projecting um, theory notes and images on the screen. There's a demo desk at the front for teacher to do the demonstration. It's got a projector, then it's got this horseshoe design for the student bench, student tables. If we move into the back half of the room, there's um, island benches, which have got the services dotted around them with display up as well. You've then got, there's a fume cupboard for obviously the, the chemistry and physics type experiments. While there's still work to be done at Hartcliffe, elsewhere, the Building Schools for the Future program has already come to fruition, with the opening of the program's flagship school in 2007. Bristol's Brunel Academy is a monument to contemporary school design, full of space, colour and light. But what are the science labs like? Now, I've given you quite an open instruction here. Get some yeast to put in the boiling tubes. Science teacher Stuart Waters is conducting an investigation with his Year 8s. Have you got your boiling tubes in the water baths? We've got some more equipment you can be using, isn't there? So you're now making your experiment far more sophisticated. How do the old facilities compare with the new? Everything was broken up, didn't have enough equipment. From, and from where everyone was breaking in, we had a petrol burn on one of the floors in there, and it just wasn't very nice to work in. Here, here you have more space in the old school, because in the old school we couldn't do stuff because it was too small. But here there's enough lights, more, more interactive boards, every class has it, more computers. You don't have to worry about sharing equipment, you can work on your own, there is enough equipment to go around. As well as the science lab, it is still a classroom, so it has to be laid out both ways. It makes you want to stay in here a bit more than the old school.
The labs seem to be a hit with the pupils, but do they meet the needs of the teachers? Well, initially it was like, wow, it's new, got loads of open space. And it wasn't until maybe a couple of weeks into teaching here that things were going, actually, this isn't quite working. When we started doing our first lots of practicals, obviously then we started realising it's a problem. How do we arrange the desks so we can use this middle island effectively? The main problem with this central island here is it stops the teacher from being creative in terms of the layout of their tables and their room. You've got so much inflexibility. Certainly, I mean, it doesn't lend itself to Greek work, which is something we really try and do. To use it, you need to have desks next to it. and It means you can't actually open or close the cupboards. Other fittings present problems as well. The gas pressure isn't high enough. So you can light one gas tap, fine, but if you have more than one gas tap lit, they just all die. Uh, kids would have, have difficulties actually unplugging the Bunsen burners because, as you can see, the, uh, the sockets are bang in the way of where you'd actually pull your Bunsen burner cord out of. Not only that, if there was an accident, that's just going to burn straight away into the plastic sockets. These problems might have been avoided, yet in a building project of this scale, the necessary discussions came too late. I did have an opportunity to sit down with the building manager um, on two or three occasions, but we were looking at plans that were already decided. He actually knew quite a bit about science labs himself, and he was quite regretful that we couldn't change the layouts. The really important thing that uh, any school going through this in the future needs to realise is that once the first bit of concrete goes down, it's pretty much too late for the design. It's really, really important um, that you actually sit down with the people that are going to design this and you really point out the point of view of the scientist, the science teacher using the lab. Back at Estover College, Project Faraday's architects have consulted the pupils on the planned designs. They wanted spaces which were really well daylit, which had a lot of outlook, yeah. so that they were always relating back to the wider world. One of the main things I said we were after was the ability to have a different sort of room, you know, five different lessons a day possibly. Um, so we've got a practical space, but then the seating area potentially could be into group work, it could be into rows, it could, it could act as more practical space. Um, and then beyond that, you know, the, the possibility of opening up the two labs into one for like a, a bigger workshop area. The ideas arising from consulting both teachers and pupils have been used to develop 3D simulations of what futuristic science teaching spaces might look like. The proposals have incorporated pairs of labs which can be joined up and they each have practical areas which are sort of fixed workbenches and a central area where the furniture is much sort of looser. So one of the things we looked at was teaching in an external environment. Day by day you see it change. Yeah, it's about, it's about making science part of their everyday life, not just when they're in you know, this, this one discrete room. One of the things we strive to do in, in every single lesson is to try and make science relevant. I mean, that's what engages people and that's what makes them learn best, really. I, I don't think we should underestimate the fact that a new room will have a massive impact on, on the aspirations of the students. As soon as a child is inspired, then they're going to work much harder, which is obviously what we're all about.